All right, today I'm going to be starting a kind of big build, which will be a computer for my dad. He's been using an iMac that's like a 2008 or something model for years. He actually plays Deus Ex Human Revolution on it, which makes no sense. I don't even know how it runs. It has some AMD mobile graphics chip on it that has like a half or a quarter gig of memory. I initially was going to give him my existing computer, which is an i7 4790K, but he had a budget available and he said, build me a computer worthy of 10 more years of use. So I've got kind of an overkill rig, but this should last quite a long time. He does mostly just gaming and, you know, mild gaming like Deus Ex and that's about it. But he also uses Handbrake from time to time for downloaded videos and that sort of thing. So I got him an eight core CPU. Could have gone with a Ryzen. Since he had the budget available, I went for a Z390 chipset with a nice gigabyte motherboard and Intel i7-9700K. So it's eight cores, no hyper threading, which is weird for an i7, but you know, whatever Intel's being itself. As for hand-me-down stuff, I do have a Focus Gold 750 watt power supply from Seasonic that came out of my test bench. My Gigabyte Wind Force GTX 980 will provide graphics power for a system. It's a 1080p monitor, so that thing will be more than enough for pretty much anything at 1080p. Picked them up an H150i Pro from Corsair, 360 millimeter rad. That's overkill because it, this 9700K probably not gonna overclock it much, if at it all. But the advantage of having the 360 mil rad, other than the fact that it costs barely anything more than a like 240, is that you can run the fan slower and dissipate the same amount of heat, so it'll be a quieter computer. I did him a mouse and keyboard, so I went with the Corsair K70 RGB Mark II and a Sabre RGB mouse from Corsair as well. Also have 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 3000 megahertz. That's more than enough. It's only two slots used, so you can add another 16 if you want. For storage, I've got a Western Digital Blue solid state drive. This is a one terabyte model. It's not an NVMe drive. There's no real point in getting an NVMe drive over just more bulk storage in this particular case because his use, it probably won't really take advantage of anything like that. And the, uh, the large capacity will make more of a difference. Four terabyte Western Digital Blue, that's gonna actually be a backup drive. I have a three terabyte something or rather spare. So I'm gonna give him that as his main bulk data drive combined with the one terabyte here. He'll have four terabytes, so that'll be four terabytes for backup. All within the same machine and we'll set up some kind of offsite backup too, but I just want a, essentially a replication system to just back up to uh, an inter a second internal drive for accidental deletions, that sort of thing. Because they're just so damn cheap now, especially used, I picked them up a 16 gig Optane module and that'll accelerate the three terabyte drive. At under 20 bucks, there's really no point in not getting one of these. It, as long as you have an Intel board, they work as a cache. Really it's a no-brainer to me. I mean, they're just they're just so cheap. As long as you have a spare M.2 slot. I also got him a copy of Windows 10 Pro. He doesn't have a copy of Windows. And I got the Pro version, not because he needs it, but because I know I'm going to need it at some point because it comes with remote desktop. I know at some point I'm going to have to log into his machine and fix something. I'd rather pay the extra money and get remote access that works really reliably. So I'm going with that. There's a few things I've got that are kind of just specific to him that he needed. So I've got a Logitech C920 or 930 webcam that I had lying around for Skype calls. Also a Blu-ray drive for ripping discs. He still has CDs and that sort of thing. So he needs to be able to rip stuff and he needs a small five port game it switch. As for a case, no surprises here. I went for what is basically my favorite case of all time, the Fractal Design Define R6. This is the white tempered glass USB-C version. The USB-C version wasn't out when I bought mine, so I actually had to buy the replacement front panel to upgrade my pretty much everything he needs. It's pretty quiet, it's because it's got sound dampening foam on it. It's big enough to hold a few drives and an optical drive, but not crazy big. You can use 140 millimeter fans everywhere in it, so that reduces the noise a lot, although there'll be 
some 120 millimeters on the cooler. So I'm gonna get started with the build. There will not be a fancy montage because that just slows down building. Okay, it's actually been a few weeks since I built the system. I have been stress testing it, quote unquote, because yeah, I've just been encoding as many things as I can with handbrake before I have to give it to my dad. What I've learned in the last couple weeks is one, this thing is a handbrake machine. It really just cuts through handbrake encoding, uh, HEVC encoding, just like it's nothing. So that's been great. I've encoded tons of stuff. I ripped several whole TV series and it's been encoding them like crazy. Two, the oversized cooler that I bought, perfect. The 360 mil rad with stock speeds after encoding for 24 seven, literally 24 seven, less than 70 degrees Celsius. Perfect. And it's quiet. None of the, none of the stuff's running at full speed. Although I, I might actually have these fractal design fans at full, but they're so quiet. You don't even realize that they're running at full speed, but the Corsair ones are not running full speed and it's just great. I mean, this thing is a really nice machine so far. The only problem I've really had is that there's some GPU sag but that's expected it was sagging before when uh, it was in my old system. And you know, it's an older card, it'll, it'll work. It's not the end of the world. It's basically just cosmetic. If it's really an issue, we can just order one of those little stands that you can get to hold it up, but it's not a big deal. The only other issue I had was getting the cooler mounted because the screws are in the way. If you mount the cooler in this position, the screws actually prevent you from putting this dust cover on. So I just dremeled out roughly where all the screws were. Works perfectly now. That's an easy fix, but something that really shouldn't have to be fixed. It should just work, but oh well, it's not the end of the world. That's the biggest mod you have to do on a computer build. You're probably doing okay. I did sneak in a bunch of RGB. I had some spare LED strips, so I just put those in along the edges. They don't look great on the inside of the case. You see they bulge out over the uh, pegs that hold the front panel on but that's just purely cosmetic on the inside. When the panel's on, it completely covers it. And I ran one of the strips down under here, under the power supply shroud. So it actually gives this kind of cool, subtle glow from the bottom. And yeah, it'll work just fine. Uh, you know, it's just gonna be kind of a surprise for him and he can just set it to whatever he wants or leave it off, it's not a big deal. As I had the parts anyway, and all the wiring went in real smooth with the very large grommets at the bottom. I really like the Define R6 case. It's a really nice case to just do any kind of build in, really. You can you can make for a very clean build with all the just cutouts I have everywhere. And since this is a fairly simple build, there's not too many things to hook up, so it, it keeps it pretty clean. I wish there was a better way to deal with the power supply wiring, like the connections to the GPU, but old designs will never die really in computers. So we're gonna be stuck with that for a long time. Cable management was pretty straightforward, seeing as you have such a huge space underneath the power supply shroud, since it's a fairly small power supply. Just dealing with the large loops of the USB cables and stuff from the front panel IO, that's pretty much the only thing that really required any kind of ugly organization. Other than that, we've got the Corsair Lighting Node Pro, which is handling the lighting on the front. Two hard drives, four terabyte, five terabyte. I ended up going with those because I purchased a, uh, a larger drive for myself and just gave them my five terabyte to use as a backup drive. All the cable management guides and stuff on this case work great. One thing you just gotta watch out for is if you're gonna use these rear mounting locations for the hard drives, you have to get flat, straight entry serial ATA and power connectors or else it just won't work. And one thing I like to do is just get these extension leads that are just serial ATA to serial ATA. They don't split it or anything. They just extend it. So you can just take the multi-port power connector that comes off your power supply and just extend it as needed to get in there. I used another one here. You can see it just extends up flat and just runs down to the power supply. I'm also using this small internal USB hub, which I find really useful in designs where you're using like a CLC cooler where you need to hook up its power and then you got the front connector and lighting nodes and all that stuff. So this simply just takes a single header and splits it into two with a little controller hub chip and that's it. 
So these things are very cheap on Amazon. They're usually sold in, sold in sets of two, where it, it just uses one port and splits it off into four. And that's what this was. I split it in half because I only needed two of them for this. And they uh, they work really well for this. Um, one of them, I, well, I say that, but one of them is not showing up. I might have to uh, shuffle these around. One, one of them might not like being plugged in through a hub. But other than that, they do work really well. Not much to see around back, just the 140 millimeter exhaust fan and the motherboard IO and GPU, which most of these are covered up. I wish I had a display port cover. I'll prevent accidentally jamming a connector in there. Excuse the lack of glass. It still has the plastic on it, so it looks pretty beat up. I don't want to uh, ruin that when he can peel it off when he gets possession of it. With all the hidden RGB, you can do a little tweak in an IQ and before you know it, there's a, uh, yeah, maybe something a little more subtle. Plus uh, with more games getting support for IQ, they take advantage when you actually play the game, which is pretty cool. Although unfortunately the list is pretty short at the moment. Either way, you should get a kick out of it. And besides, it'll probably just be covered up. Like he's probably just gonna throw it on the floor and you'll never see it anyway, so oh well. As for the software side of things, it's a pretty basic setup, just Windows 10. I kind of removed a lot of the crap that's installed. I got Steam installed. I temporarily have the Gigabyte crap software installed just to screw out the RGB. I'm going to remove that before he takes it. I have the EVGA Precision X1 software installed. I'm going to bump up the power target. Save that. Make sure it's applying that at startup because we want extra power limit. It's a big card. And beyond that, like I said, it's basically just Steam and Chrome and that kind of stuff. One other thing I have installed is SyncBack Pro, which is a great program for network backups and local backups. Now I intend to set up a network backup using OpenVPN. I'm going to do a script to connect to OpenVPN to get his computer on my network and then transfer files to the RNAS, then disconnect. That way it's not always mapping a network drive. There's no point in being connected to it all the time. Because SyncBack has such an advanced set of configuration tools, you can actually set up programs that launch before and after, and you can do all sorts of stuff with it. So it should be pretty straightforward in setting that up. It's not gonna look good on YouTube good because I shoot my YouTube videos at 24 FPS and this is running at 60, but I can assure you this is incredibly smooth. And we got that Deus Ex Human Revolution is a particularly challenging title, but it uh, does play it very well and it should work well for any future games, at least for a while. I mean, if he really wants to play modern games, he can uh, switch over to a newer video card. I also gifted him a few games on Steam so he can uh, try out a little bit more than just Deus Ex. I think Alien Isolation is gonna be a good one to try. Fantastic game, really great. And of course it plays really well. I don't wanna start a new game because I'm just gonna have to reset it again because I want him to have the full brand new experience. But I have to say this is a pretty straightforward build and the system is very nice. I mean it's a little overkill but he gave me quite a large budget for it relatively speaking. So yeah even though a couple parts are kind of hand-me-down parts like my video, the video card and the power supply couple odds and ends like the monitor. Overall, it's a pretty damn powerful machine that's gonna last them quite a while. 